Here I'm going to solve a problem from the textbook. This is problem 19 from chapter 25 in the ninth edition. In it we have a battery with a switch and four capacitors that are arranged in this way. We're told, we're given the value of two of the capacitors. C2 has a value of three microfarads, C4 has a value of four microfarads, and the battery voltage is nine volts. We're told that initially all of the charges, all of the capacitors are uncharged. When the switch is closed, then 12 microcoulombs of charge flows through point A, and 8 microcoulombs of charge travels through point B. All right. And what we have to determine is what are the values of C1 and C3. Now, with a problem like this, with capacitors or later on with a problem with resistors, then the first thing that I would tend to do is redraw it so it makes it really clear which elements are in series and which are in parallel. So, I'll start with the battery here. Switch up here. The capacitors here. And back. So that you can see that this is V, this is C1, this is C2, this is C3, and this is C4. And in case you're not sure about that parallel part, realize that both the top and the bottom of C3 and C4 are connected together, so they have to be in parallel. And the top of both of them is the bottom of C2, which means that connects there. So that means this is point A right here, and this is point B right here. All right. So now we've redrawn the diagram to show what we have. So we have C1 and C2 in series, C3 and C4 in parallel, and in fact C1 and C2 are in series with the parallel combination of C3 and C4. So. Before we do any math, what we want to do is determine all the things we know about the circuit before we start. So, for capacitors in series, then the same charge has to flow through them. So that means that Q1 has to equal Q2. The charge on Q1 has to be the same as the charge on Q2. But also, that has to be the same charge that flows into this parallel combination. And the current flowing into that parallel combination is QA. Now, this charge B, the charge going down this branch, the only place that charge goes is into C4, so QB has to be the same as the charge on capacitor 4, because that's all it can do. Also, since we have these two capacitors in parallel, anytime we have elements in parallel, their voltages are the same. So we know that V3 equals V4. Also, now we have these three elements in series this capacitor in series with this capacitor in series with this parallel combination. So we can say that the total battery voltage has to be V1 plus V2. What's the parallel voltage across these? Well, the parallel voltage across these is the voltage at A. All right. And actually, if you look at it, since point A and point B are connected by a wire, even though the current in both of them is different, the voltage has to be the same because they're connected by a wire. So we also know that VA has to equal VB. All right. So these are all things we know before we do any calculations, just by what we know about series and parallel circuits. We also know that for any capacitor, The charge is given by the capacitance times the voltage. So we're going to use this equation in various ways in a minute. So 
for instance, the capacitance is given by the charge divided by the voltage, and the voltage is given by the charge divided by the capacitance. So we'll potentially use all three forms of that. All right. So now we can start doing some calculations. All right. So from this first one, we said that the charge on C1 and the charge on C2 are also the charge on QA. Well, we're told what QA is. QA is 12 microcoulombs. So Q1 equals Q2 equals QA equals 12 microcoulombs. All right. We're told that QB is the same as Q4. So the charge on capacitor 4 is the same as QB, but we know that that's 8 microcoulombs. So, since we know the charge on a capacitor, and in this case we know its capacitance, so we can calculate the voltage across it. Voltage is Q over C, so the voltage across capacitor 4 is the charge on capacitor 4 over C4. So that is 8 microcoulombs over 4 microfarads. So that gives us a voltage of 2 volts. So the voltage across 4 is 2 volts. Now, we know that when we have components in parallel, they have to have the same voltage. So that means the voltage across capacitor 3 is also 2 volts because they're in parallel. So now, we know the voltage across capacitor 3. And we would like to calculate, we want to find out what the capacitance is. Well, if we look here, then the charge on QA, some of it goes here to C4, but the rest of it has to go to C3. All the charge flowing through this point goes one of two places. It goes on to C4 or C3. So Q3 is QA minus QB. And we could have determined that before doing the math. Anyway, so we're told that QA is 12 microcoulombs. QB is 4 microcoulombs, or 8 microcoulombs, I'm sorry. So that means Q3 is 4 microcoulombs. So then, now that we know the charge and we know the voltage, we can calculate the capacitance from this one. So C3 is Q3 over V3. So that is 4 microcoulombs over 2 volts, which is 2 microfarads. All right. So now we've turned, determined C3. It's 2 microfarads. All right. So the next step. Um, so now we know what the voltage is across here. Because we know the value of C2 and we know the charge on C2, then we can calculate the voltage across C2. Again, the charge on C2 has to be the same as CA. So Q2 equals QA, which is 12 microcoulombs. So we want to calculate the voltage across V2, which is Q2 over C2. So that's 12 microcoulombs over C2 is 3 microfarads. So that is 4 volts. So 4 volts is the voltage across C2. 2 volts is the voltage across this parallel combination. And so now we're almost there. To find out the value of C1, we know what the charge is on it. We need to know the voltage across it. Well, from here, we can get the voltage across V1. 
V1 is going to be V minus V2 minus VA. So this is 9 volts is V. We just said V2 is 4 volts. And VA, the voltage across this combination, is 2 volts. So it's 9 minus 6 is 3 volts. So V1 is 3 volts. So now if we want the capacitance, capacitance is Q over V. So now we have the charge on Q1, which is QA, so that's 12 microcoulombs. The voltage at V1 is 3 volts. So that means C1 is 4 microfarads. So we're done.